Run it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 2182. Be prepared to be inspired and buckle up because today we're going off road. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today, I'm kind of a little bit back home in North County, San Diego, Vista, California, with a very special guest by the name of Matt Martelli. Matt, welcome to Cars Yeah. Do you have any gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? I'm definitely ready to drop that clutch. And uh, get a little dirty because we're going to talk a little bit about off-road racing and having fun in marketing and media and all the fun things that Matt does. But before we start, what's one little thing that maybe, maybe even your friends don't know about you, Matt? Oh, man, there's a lot. You know, it's funny. We talk about stereotypes and what what people enjoy. And uh, probably one of my biggest things I love doing in my free time is gardening. So that is very different than off-road racing, you know, but I have kind of the same thing. It's kind of Zen-like to get out in the yard and just, uh, you know, do things. Do you have, you know, I've had people on the show that are into bonsai or, I mean, one guy, he's like a grass growing, cutting maniac. His lawn has to look like a putting green. Uh, Or do you just like to get out there and just be able to drift off into the garden? Uh, yeah, I like the Zen of it, but, uh, I've got some raised beds and then, uh, you know, grow, I grow some of my own food. And then here at our, our Mad Media Ranch, we've got a pretty decent orchard, uh, with, uh, citrus and pears and a variety of other fruit trees. And fortunately we're, uh, in a subtropical region, so we can pretty much grow everything. So we keep, we keep planting stuff and finding all the funny, weird trees that we, we like experimenting with. So. Yeah, it keeps me sane for sure. You know, um, that's one of the great things about where you live. That weather just allows you to grow just about everything. You think of avocados and fruit trees and the flowers. And uh, yeah, so you must have a lot of fun in the garden down there. I definitely do. Yeah, very cool. So let me give you a proper introduction. Uh, Matt Martelli is the founder of Mad Media in San Diego. We say North County, San Diego uh, based. It's a multidisciplinary creative advertising and marketing consulting group. He and his team craft authentic, culturally engaging brand messages, delivering them across print, web, photography, and film platforms. Mad Media has been leading the online content revolution since 1995, producing commercial, television, online content, and viral film projects. And guess what? Matt is also CEO of the Mint 400 and California 300, as if he doesn't have enough to do. He's one of the biggest influences in off-road racing and its cultures. When he's not producing off-road racing events, he's directing and producing award-winning off-road content or growing something in his garden. We'll be back in just a moment, but first a word from our sponsors. So they put fuel in the tanks, give them a little love if you would, and we'll be right back. Autumn has arrived, the weather is changing, and that means your vehicle needs extra protection against everything that Mother Nature can drop. Covercraft offers you a multitude of layers and protection for your special rides. Are you putting your summer toys, watercraft, RV, motorcycles, trailers, even your patio furniture away? Well, Covercraft has a custom fit cover just for you. Covercraft offers you 10 different car cover options, that's right, 10 for your vehicle's protection, whether you store it inside or out. All carefully crafted into the form and fit with the quality and attention to detail that's been their standard since 1965. And don't forget, their custom fit seat covers, pet pads, yeah, Fido's gonna get wet and muddy, dash mats, sunscreens, and custom fit floor mats and trunk mats are available at Covercraft.com. Whatever the surface you want to protect, Covercraft has a solution just for you. And if you use the code YA21 at Covercraft.com, you'll get 10% off your Covercraft order plus free shipping. That's right, 10% off and free shipping. Simply use the code YEAH21 at checkout. Come on, Mother Nature, bring it on. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. Most people don't think about their collector car insurance until their annual premium becomes due. Well, why wait and see if there are better options for your beloved rides? 
I didn't. Did you know if you change carriers before your policy runs out, your insurance company has to refund you the unearned portion of your policy premium? I did my homework. I shopped around and I found American Collectors Insurance. They've been protecting collector vehicles since 1976. I encourage you to call my friends at American Collectors Insurance. Ask them about their agreed value policy. And if your collector vehicle is on your regular auto policy, you will be shocked at the savings, not to mention the assurance, should something bad happen to your ride, that you'll get what your vehicle is actually worth. Give them a call today for a quote at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866 224 Nine three two four. Tell them you're a friend of Mark Green at Cars. Yeah, American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. Automotive enthusiasts just like you and me. That's American Collectors Insurance. Give them a call today. Fall is here, and you know what that means. Time to put a good coat of protection on your vehicle. I'm teamed up with AutoGeek, and they've been the leading source of auto detailing products, accessories, and expert knowledge for more than 20 years. What started back in 1997 as a small mail-order catalog company grew into a multi-website-based e-commerce store, and that's what they are today. With a large online presence on its own website featuring close to 100 different brands, AutoGeek has grown to be the largest car care retailer in the country. AutoGeek's wholesale program serves accounts in over 30 countries, and its retail sector ships worldwide. If you want to protect your vehicle this fall, and you should, go to AutoGeek.net for the best product selection on the internet today and technical support. AutoGeek.net is where I go for my detailing needs. That's AutoGeek.net. So, Matt, let's uh, get back to it. And I want to talk about two things. Obviously, Mad Media, what you're doing there, what that's all about, because this is something that is near and dear to your heart. And then we're going to get into some off-road stuff with the uh, Mint 400 and California 300. But let's start with Mad. So take it away. Yeah, absolutely. Um, You know, I I had worked in in the advertising industry and then also worked at skateboard and surf brands and both worlds kind of drove me crazy. They, they had their pluses and minuses, you know, the action sports world was super loose, but very quick and reactive. And the, you know, the more corporate ad world was very planned out and methodical, but oftentimes they were too rigid in what they were doing and they would miss a lot of cultural trends. So I started mad media uh, with the idea that we could merge those two ideas and and create a hybrid, which was what we became from the onset, we were always doing you know work in multiple mediums, and I had always done photography since I was a child, and and then picked up video cameras to film skateboarding as a kid, and uh, you know that just kept re- evolving and um, you know into you know what we are today. So if I was to be looking for your company to help me promote what I'm doing, and I'm kind of reversing this a little bit, what kind of company would I be that would be a good fit for Mad Media? I mean, really, our specialty is off-road. I'd say, secondly, automotive. That's what we live and breathe. So can, can we do a video about tennis? Yeah, but I don't really know anything about tennis or care. So we wouldn't be those guys. So really, really like automotive brands and, and you know, specifically in off-road is, is our forte. Yeah, absolutely. You know, having grown up in Southern California like I did, of course, down in Mexico, you've got all the races down there. I actually did a pre-run when I was in high school with a guy. His dad was racing in the Baja 1000, and they would do these pre-runs. You know all about that, kind of test, test the rig. And I think my insides are still jumbled around from – that very short day of just doing a few miles. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Now, this is back in the 70s when we didn't have quite the uh, technology, let's say, um, of travel in suspension systems and things. So I remember having to wear a mouth guard and yeah, it was pretty brutal. But you've evolved into two pretty incredible events, the MIT 400 and the California 300. Let's start with the 400. What's that? Well, it's, it's actually really cool. So we were doing content for this race when it was resurrected. And, you know, by the second year of working with the, with the race organization that had resurrected it, they just, you know, got a little over their head and, and we bought it from them um, and started implementing our ideas and, you know, just more modern 
marketing and, and content and, uh, you know, grew it into the largest race in, in North America. And now it's, you know, north of 400 entries, 65,000 spectators. So the Holy race, cow. Oh my yeah, gosh. The, the race occurs annually in March. We're the second week in March every year, just outside of Las Vegas. And I can tell you, if you're at all interested in automotive or racing, the spectacle of our style of desert racing. It's just, it's just incredible. There, there's nothing like it. And you touched on it before. It's, it's all about the suspension. You know, there, there are lots of vehicles that have more horsepower, better handling, you know, faster zero to 60, but nothing can go through three to four foot whoops like a trophy truck. And you know, in, in many cases, you know, excess of a hundred miles an hour, you know, people, when people talk about suspension, they talk, they usually are measuring in inches, like, Hey, I've got three inches, four inches, you know, at best six inches, right? Yeah. A trophy truck has 26 inches of travel in the rear. I'm sorry, 26 in the front and 36 in the back, meaning that the wheel can cycle more than three feet. That's insane. And all while the cab remains relatively stable. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a weird thing for people to wrap their head around. And when I say it to them, they they can't comprehend it until they actually see the vehicle or ride in the vehicle. Yeah, it's it's incredible. So when you think about the Mint 400, you said it, it takes place outside of Las Vegas? Yes. So how, how does a race like this work? Because a lot of people think of off-road racing as traveling long distances. And if you go to try to watch it, you can only be in one place, basically, and you just kind of turn your head and they go by versus a racetrack uh, or even a drag race where you kind of go down the track and it's over with. So how do people, I, I can see how people would participate in it. And maybe you talk about that first. Where does it start? How does it end? Does it go in a, a long distance travel? Does it go in a circle? How does that all work? And then as a spectator, because there's a lot of people that go out to this, how does a spectator have fun at your event? Well, I'll, let me answer the last question first. Okay. You know, we are one of the few races where we have set spectating areas. So the, the race course is a loop. It's a hundred mile loop. And so it starts and finishes just outside of Las Vegas in uh, Prim, Nevada, which is at the state line uh, behind a casino called Buffalo Bills. So pavement, we have full infrastructure, VIP, food, beer, drink, everything a major event should have. So that's one of the best areas to view it. We also have four remote spectator areas. So if you want to go out and spend the day with the family and pop the tent up and bring the cooler in, you can have that experience. Or you come to our start finish and you have a fully catered experience that's, you know, more like going to a NASCAR race, right? But I will definitely tell you we've got better food because we bring in a good friend of ours to do all the food, Drew Deckman, who um, is known for his uh, uh, being a Michelin star chef and then his restaurant in Guadalupe uh, Valley in, in Baja. So it's the food's amazing. Lots of uh, be adult beverages, of course. And then all of our vendors. So we've got just over 100 vendors that come out and display all the latest, greatest off-road aftermarket products, as well as new vehicles. So it, it's a great, you know, multi-day event to do with the family and, uh, you know, just have a great day and just watch all the action. So we do do a live stream. The live stream is, is streamed uh, to various uh, uh, big screens in that area. So you can see what's going on at, at any given time uh, on this 100-mile course. We have over almost 400 teams that race with us, everything from motorcycles to Class 11, which is VW Bugs, all the way up to our top you know, tier, which is trophy trucks, which are like you know, more or less like F-16s of, of off-road. It's incredible. This is really cool. And the whole world of off-roading and, and racing, you combine those two, is quite extensive and large. And of course, everybody who buys a vehicle, especially when you think about trucks, they typically want to modify it in some way and do something to it. So that whole aftermarket, you think about SEMA, which I've gone to year after year and all the aftermarket off-road vehicle stuff and on-road stuff to lift trucks and all that. I mean, it's a perfect combination of a lot of different markets and sectors and people, which sounds cool. And then the California 300, tell us about that. Yeah, it's really exciting. We're a couple weeks away. It's the very first one we, we're doing in, in California. 
but the area that we're racing in Barstow has a long tradition of off-road racing. Um, there was previously a famous race there called the Fireworks 250, and we're basically using that same course, but that race hasn't occurred in 27 years, so it's a pretty big deal bringing back a major desert race to Southern California, which is really the home of, of off-road culture and off-road racing culture. Be cool. And you say that's coming up soon, right? Yep. That's uh, October 12th through the 16th uh, in Barstow, California. Um, and uh, it's open spectating and camping. Um, we have tickets to the Midway on sale now at uh, the california 300com Very cool. I love it. You know, I like to talk about what I call our driving inspirations, people that helped you along the way. Maybe they were influencers, mentors, whomever it might be, but somebody that was really key and influential in your success that you've seen today. Do you have somebody like that in your life? You know, I've got a lot of those people. I mean, one of the interesting things about off-road culture is it, it's it's a little bit of the Wild West, meaning that if you can concept something and bring it to life, then you can use it in racing. Um, because our, our highest level of racing trophy trucks is the only form of truly unlimited racing in the world, meaning that, you know, you can make whatever you want technology wise. And if it'll come and, and survive, you know, the, the desert and the racing, you can implement it. So, so that's created this like kind of beautiful group of people that, you know, are, are always just coming up with new stuff. So it's weird, you know, this culture has attracted a lot of very intelligent, passionate people who, you know, engineer and create stuff, you know, most cases in their garage that then goes on to be, you know, product that not only we race, but um, end up in street trucks and vehicles. So, you know, I've been really fortunate to be helped by a lot of people, mentored by a lot of people. And then there's other people that have been just big inspirations for, for, for me and for my brother. The biggest one I would say is Mickey Thompson. You know, he had a huge influence on us. We never actually got to meet him, but we grew up going to his races and watching, you know, all the brands and the products that he built. And a lot, a lot of people don't know all the different things that he invented, but he was uh, an incredible engineer, race promoter, racer, et cetera. So um, he was a big influence. Uh, another one that uh, has been a big influence was Cal Wells. Um, he ran PPI back in the day, which was to date the most successful race program in off-road. Um, many of you know of the legendary Ivan Stewart. So his truck was fielded by PPI and, and Cal Wells. You know, and there's a lot of other people currently, you know, Robbie Pierce, who owns Jimco, uh, Matt and used to own Mastercraft and uh, Impact. He's been a, a good friend and a big influence on our success. So, you know, a lot of people, I, I could go down a huge list. I, unfortunately, I don't think we have the time for that today. Well, it's a it's an amazing group of people. And I've had many off-roaders on the show and people running shows uh, that have been so successful. And they say the same thing. And I had Mickey Thompson's son on the show. Yeah. And of course, a great book and the tragedy of his life uh, when it was lost. But uh, yeah, it's just a, it's a group of, of people that just love to get together and have fun and, and promote and create and, and all this kind of stuff. So uh, you're playing in a, a very fun world. We'll take a short break and uh, thank our sponsors again. And we'll be back in just a minute. So sit tight. You've heard me talk about Linkage Magazine here on Cars, yeah, for a couple of years now. Well, they're growing. And in 2023, they're going to grow from four issues a year to six. And there's an opportunity here for you to take advantage of this growth. If you go to LinkageMag.com and click on the Renew button, if you already subscribe, you can get a great deal. Use the code RENEW6 for one year and you'll get six issues for the price of four or Type in Renew 12 for two years where you also have a great savings. Plus, they'll even throw in a free Linkage hat. How cool is that? The publisher of Linkage is Donald Osborne. He's been a guest multiple times here on Cars Yeah. He's become a good friend of mine. And I'll tell you, Linkage Magazine is one of those newer magazines that you're going to want to get. It's all about experiences, opinions, and values. It's a wonderful publication, something I look forward to getting. And now that I'm going to be getting six a year, <laughs> even more special. So go to linkagemag.com. Again, use the code RENEW6 or RENEW12 to get that special deal. 
Do it before December 31st, 2022, so that in 2023, you'll get six issues of Linkage Magazine instead of four. Being a professional automotive technician today requires an understanding of technology, computers, and electrical systems that are highly advanced and very complex. Cars yeah is pleased to support TechForce Foundation. It's one of our charities of choice and its efforts to help young people pursue the technical education and careers as automotive techs. Through scholarships, grants, and good old-fashioned hands-on experience with cars, trucks, boats, and more, TechForce and Cars yeah are working to connect young people with viable careers in the automotive sector. Join us by visiting techforce.org today. Okay, Matt, well, now I like to talk about or ask my guests about what I call the big challenge question here. And this is really about a huge challenge, an obstacle, maybe even a failure. But more importantly, what did you learn from it so you can move forward? Now, when I think about the combination of off-road racing and the challenges that brings, and then you combine putting on a massive event that has so many moving parts and people and governments having to deal with bureaucracies and rules and insurance and the food. I mean, all this stuff. Oh, my gosh. Talk about a challenging career path you've gotten into uh, with this side of your career. But uh, is there something that really kind of pushed you to your limits that you could share with us, but more importantly, taught you a really valuable lesson? Yeah, I mean, I think that in general, just moving from you know, being the, the content guys to being the actual race promoter was, it was a huge, you know, it was a huge undertaking. And we are real fortunate in that our foray into it, we were able to partner with Casey folks from best of the desert. It was kind of cheating to be honest with you, but it, it, it was daunting and it was a huge undertaking, but Fortunately, my brother is my partner and he has different qualities than I do um, that complement each other, each one of us. So we, we were able to, you know, over several years, really dial down and understand the mechanism of, of putting on large scale events and, and to even pushing them, adding things that are new and figuring out how to pay for them. And it was definitely, you know, a daunting task. And, and frankly, it still is, you know, when we, you know, go and we create new events, it's not entirely starting over, but we've got to convince BLM, we've got to convince cities, we've got to convince everybody that what we're doing is good for them. And fortunately, we have such a big success with the Mint 400. I mean, the Mint 400 generates north of $40 million for Las Vegas. So when we walk into a room, we can at least talk about our successes. And um, frankly, I just feel like we're just scratching the the surface on, on what we can do. But it, it's one of those things like we've always had this belief that creatives should be in you know a position of control. When you go through school as a creative, they kind of set you up for failure and tell you not to focus on the business side of things and don't worry about your your taxes or your contracts. And, you know, I found that to be problematic very early on. No kidding. Yeah. Um, And so I I wanted to know, like, even if I wasn't the guy in the tractor pushing the dirt, I wanted to know it and understand it. And I wanted to actually go and do it. So that I understood, like when I look at something and, and somebody says, oh, it's going to take us four days of dirt work. I want to be able to look at it and go, nah, I think it's two or you know what? You're underestimating. And I love that. I love learning as far as being creative and, and then now being on the promoter side and having to deal with a lot of you know administrative things and things that, frankly, I, I don't particularly care for. It's a challenge, but I, I really enjoy the overall aspect of creating these events because that in itself is very creative and fulfilling as well. Do you think that your content creating background, that is, you create things that, you know, you have when you're being a director or producer of anything, or just say a creative director in an ad campaign, you have to think through so many different pieces of a puzzle. And I would guess that your background in producing creative content, there was a lot of crossover there in putting an event together because one of the things about events, people, I remember back in the day, people say, oh, you should have a concord, have your own concord. I'm going, do you know what is involved in it? Well, yeah, just invite some people and they park on a lawn. No, 
<laughs> There's so many pieces to this thing. I mean, just insurance and where do they park the trailers and where are all the guests who are coming going to park and the insurance and all these things. So do you think that your your history with content creativity carried over in being able to understand? Because you mentioned that, like moving the dirt. I mean, who, who thinks of that? Well, some guy in a tractor moves dirt, whatever. No, not whatever. <laughs> and then he got a permits to touch the dirt, especially if you're dealing with the bureaucracies of government. So do you think that helped you in being successful in that other part of your business? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, production is production, right? Whether you're producing a television show or a commercial, many of these things were things that we had already dealt with. We did a very successful project or series of content for Polaris Razor uh, called XP1K. And, you know, in that we had to go build entire off-road playgrounds and not just dirt work, but build all sorts of structures out of trees and wood. So, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely, you know, it, that definitely helped us. And the, the other thing we found really empowering was that the type of content that we're creating, it's me and my brother predominantly, and then our team that that's producing, writing, doing everything, right? So it allows us to create things that are very uh, authentic and have what I would perceive as a high value of storytelling, right? Because it's matching good stories with compelling visual content. I don't see a lot of that right now. I mean, I would say probably the most impressive stuff that I've seen of late is related to the UFC because they have in-house content creation. So it, it allows us to, to do things that wouldn't really happen if you're using third parties, right? Because they're not psychologically, physically, emotionally invested into the success of the event and the culture. Like that's the other part of it is that we didn't get into the promotion side just to be promoters. We got into it because we love the culture of off-road racing and we think it's extremely valuable and we want to share it with the world. Well, part of the way that, that we or one of the things that we need to do to, to do that is to have spectacular events that that are accessible that people can come to and go, okay, I get it. This is incredible. When you see these vehicles, you know, go off the line two by two and bang doors and then begin a 400 mile race in which we're down to minutes and sometimes seconds at the end of, of the race. I mean, the, the competition level is just remarkable. So yeah. And there's a lot of really famous people that participate in these races too. Racers and lots of times racers from other types of racing that do this off-road stuff and you go, wow, he's here? So yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, my hat's off to you. You guys are juggling a lot of balls, spending a lot of plates on sticks, as they say, <laughs> <laughs> to make this all work. Uh, let's talk about a special vehicle story in your life. Is there a car, a vehicle, motorcycle, off-road, whatever it might be that stands out, something that uh, kind of warms your heart when you think back on it? Huh, there's there's a lot of stuff. It's interesting because we were involved with the mainstreaming of UTVs for Polaris, and that was a lot of fun. And for me personally, like I saw the evolution of where those vehicles came from with early buggy designs from famous builders like Lynn Cheneth. So, you know, growing up in Southern California, you start with these very rudimentary VW powered vehicles that were built in the 70s and in, into the 80s. And then fast forward to, you know, the last 10 years of evolution of UTVs. Now, I mean, you can go buy one of these vehicles stock and it's incredible. And it's a few hundred bucks a month to own one and, and have this incredible off road experience. So, so that's one of them. The other one is that currently we're going through this revolution or evolution of four-wheel drive trophy trucks and mason motorsports is they've built 14 of them now and we just did the the reveal for one of the new gym or the new jimco fastball all-wheel drive dragon trophy truck and it just as a nerd off-road nerd it's super fun because we get to see these vehicles be built and watch as these builders implement new technology and new parts that previously weren't available. So, you know, everybody, you know, everybody knows what four wheel drive is. Well, it's always have a, a huge limitation in what we do because in general, four wheel drive is not fast. 
and it limits your travel. So it's a, it's pr- just previous to the last few years, we've, we've been racing in dominant with two wheel drive trucks, right? And so these four wheel drive trucks have just kind of come into the market and started racing. And now they've won almost every major off road race except for two. And they're both our races. So it's a cool thing to see. But yeah, this, this truck in particular that Jim coach has finished two years in, in the making about a $1.5 million car. And, uh, it's owned by Bobby Patton, uh, one of the owners of the LA Dodgers. And it, it's just an incredible vehicle. Like the acceleration is just really unparalleled compared to what we've had in the past. You know, they were able to keep the majority of the travel suspension in by, you know, implementing some newer technology with, with hub technology and a few other things. So it, it's fun. It's exciting because they birth a new vehicle like this. And then it goes out and it goes into full on warfare at these races at our race and at, you know, the races in Baja as well. And it's either going to finish or it's going to break. And if it breaks, they go back to the drawing board, fix it and, you know, improve that technology and come back out. So it, it's, you know, I always describe it like we're, we are like the MMA of racing. There's really no place to hide. Like you, you go out and put your best foot forward you know, with the technology that you've created with your vehicle prep, with your driver. And first, you've got to beat the Mojave Desert. And then second, you've got to beat the competition. And, you know, the competition in, in our race in particular is very fierce. Yeah, it's, you know what I look at this as, if you think back, now you're a lot younger than I am, but back when I was a kid, we had the Schwinn Stingrays, and they had banana seats, and high-rise handlebars, and monkey bars, and you know, all this stuff, and then as I got a little older, we started modifying those in our garages to make dirt bikes, and I'm talking about not motorcycles, but bicycles, you know. And finally, I think the bicycle manufacturers started going, look at all these kids modifying these stingrays and making fun dirt bikes so they can jump them. You know, no more banana seats that you could (laughs) destroy your destroy your manhood on if you went off a hill that was too high. It's a smaller seat where you could kind of run off the back and different handlebars that mimic the motocross and motorcycle world and. It's the same in surfing. I know you're a surfer. I grew up a surfer and surfers start building their own boards and modifying. And finally, the manufacturers go, you know, consumers might want this stuff. My next door neighbor's, uh, he's a little even older than me, 70, but he's got a Ford Raptor and he takes it out to his ranch and flies off hills on it. And I mean, that for that car to come around, that truck built with that kind of technology, off-road shock technology and all that, uh, yeah, it kind of comes from people doing daring things. And then finally, the big guys realize, okay, there's a market for this. We can invest in it. But uh, so much being done. Well, I'm going to be your car psychologist today. Crawl into your skull a little bit, Matt. If you were reincarnated or truck-aided, <laughs> re-truckinated, is that a word? I think I just made it up. As a vehicle, what would you be and why? Definitely a trophy truck. I mean, it's just there is nothing like these vehicles, you know, and most people have no idea that they exist. The thing that's, like I said, that's remarkable about them is the the suspension and what they can go through. In our race, it's 400 miles sprint flat out as hard as you could drive the vehicle. And most vehicles don't finish. We have a a less than 50 percent finish rate. So just seeing these vehicles and understanding and now we've moved to big blocks. So you have, you know, 1200 horsepower engines. It's about a 6,000 pound vehicle that just dances through the desert through all this big, you know, all these big whoops and just the, the dynamics of the vehicle and what it's capable of doing are just, it's just outright incredible. And I love sharing it with people because it's like selling drugs, right? You introduce them to it and then they kind of have this moment when they realize what it is, right? And then usually they're a lifer after that. Um, you know, I'm a big rally fan enthusiast of, of rally racers and rally cars and their discipline and their technique. But what we have is just, they're just fire breathing dragons and, you know, just incredible vehicles to watch race and, and, and see what they can do. Pretty wild, pretty wild. You know, I, I think the correlation there, as I hear you describe it, is what you do for a living, you have to get things done. When you produce content for people, it has to be done 
trophy trucks get things done. They just have to get things done or else. So uh, I think there's a nice relationship there. How about a great book you'd like to share with us? Oh, um, there was one book that I read a little while ago, and uh, it was called Drive Like Hell. And, and it's just it's a great book on the, the birth of NASCAR and racing in America, really. And I think it's a, a important book for every race enthusiast to read because it, it teaches you uh, why we're doing this and where it came from, that this is something that's American and that we have to make sure that lasts forever, regardless of whatever street cars that we're driving. So before I let you go today, I'm going to enable you to go on the ultimate drive. Why do I kind of guess what this might be? But maybe you'll surprise us. I'm going to provide you with any vehicle in the world, no matter the cost. You can take it on a ride, a drive, wherever you want to drive it, even out in the dirt, in the desert. And you can take anybody with you, even somebody who's no longer with us, which opens up a world of opportunity. So what's the ultimate drive look like for a guy like you, Matt? Well, I think if it's if it's not a race, then, you know, I'd like a little bit of comfort and I'd like to be in a pre-runner. So it has all the capability of a trophy truck, but it's got air conditioning and a window and, you know, all the accoutrements. But it, if I could pick anybody to go co-dog with me and that's not with us anymore, I, I would definitely say Mickey Thompson. You know, I, I would love to be able to just pick his brain and hear his stories and what worked and what didn't work. But, uh, you know, there's there's a bunch of people, too, that I'd like to do that that are still around. So um, and where I would it's it's a funny thing because I love traveling. A couple of years ago when Dakar moved to Saudi, I went to Saudi to see how that race was being executed. And, you know, it was a beautiful country. We were on the Red Sea side. Um, but I'd say, you know, as I travel, I'm always looking for something that's better than Baja California and I just haven't found it yet. So I need to do some more traveling, but that being said, I would definitely say the peninsula of Baja, you know, running the peninsula of Baja is just, you know, for off-roading, it's just magical. You get a little bit of every type of terrain, an ocean and the Sea of Cortez and you cross over the peninsula and, you go over mountains. So in one day you can be on one ocean, go to up over a mountain range and be in snow and then drop down and be on the Sea of Cortez side. So it's pretty spectacular and it holds a lot of history for our culture. So yeah, I would have to say pre-runner uh, Mickey Thompson on the Baja Peninsula. Sounds like a nice ride to me. Well, you've taken us on a wild ride today, Matt, and I really appreciate you spending some time with me. I want to do a shout out. Thank you to our mutual friend, Mark Osmondson, who's been a guest here on Cars. Yeah, he's the one that introduced me to Matt. So Mark, thank you very much. Before I let you go, could you share a success quote, a mantra, or some type of words of inspiration for people out there that want to get out and have some fun like you have? Yeah, you know, it's funny, one that rang true, especially over the last few years that everybody's had to deal with all different issues related to COVID and businesses being shut down. But uh, and I don't know who originally said this, but there's only one way and that's forward. (laughs) There you go. Absolutely. Works in life and racing. How can people learn more about you and your business and your events? Well, our events, the, the next one that's coming up is the California 300. And you can go to that website. It's the California300.com. Uh, then in March, we'll have the Mint uh, going on, and that's the Mint400.com. And if you guys want to learn more about uh, Mad Media, madmedia.com. Uh, we're on all the different social media platforms as well uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and of course now TikTok. Everything. Yeah, there's so many ways to get out there. Well, I'll put all these links on Matt's show notes page. Uh, You know, for you listeners that maybe have never gotten into off-road stuff, you might want to look into what's going on with this. It is super fun to watch, be a part of. It's a whole new world. You can meet all sorts of new cool people. And who knows, you may end up out there in the dirt in an off-road vehicle of your own. And there's lots of ways to enjoy this this world of off-roading. You don't have to spend millions of dollars. You can do this in a very affordable way. It's a great way to bring the family together and camp and get out there. So lots of different uh, ways to enjoy off-road stuff. Matt, thanks for being so generous with your time and expertise and sharing your experiences with our listeners and with me. I'm a little jealous because you're down there and you mentioned in our pre-show chat, you're going to go out and maybe catch some waves. Ah, Catch a few for me today, if you would, my friend. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you 
down the road. That was awesome today. Uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we can get you out to the Mint 400. Yep, that would be fun. Or out in the ocean and catch some surf. That'd be fun too. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.